There is something I take exception with, and that's the fact that you said that he's going to lose this locker room. And that's where I disagree, because the first thing you have to know about any locker room is the level of segregation within that same locker room. Tom Brady and his existence, because of his performance and his championships and his accolades, is different than even a Gronkowski's. And even if you want to make those two married in existence, high society in the locker room, there are 51 other players sitting there saying, um, my name is not Tom Brady. My game is not Gronkowski's. And I have to go out there in a non-guaranteed sport, a non-guaranteed culture where I only eat what I kill and stay away from those political issues up top. So as you see Kraft beefing with Belichick or Belichick beefing with Brady, Brady is now in alliance with Gronkowski. Y'all can have those conversations, and I see them from afar. But if I'm one of those 50 other, 51 other guys in the locker room, I am about the meat and potatoes. I'm about whatever Belichick says to get me to that payday. So he has not lost the locker room because those guys are properly motivated. This is where the NFL wins and making sure you're always going to show up to go get that opportunity. It's the intangibles, particularly recently, in the, maybe even in the last decade, it's been the intangibles that have set the Patriots apart from everybody else. Yes. Even if you go yes. back to their very beginning when they beat the Rams mm -hmm. the first time, and they came out as a team, and the Rams were this super team. They were defending Super Bowl champions, I believe. They were the super team, and the Patriots, Ty Law, and all, they all bought in to the system. They did. And to Belichick. Yeah. And so, to me, every great leader needs a disciple. a top. And when you lose that top disciple, like he's lost Brady, I think the intangibles that have always given the Patriots an edge, they're going to get less of that. And so, yeah, you're right. Guys are going to still do their job. Yes. But there's just this little extra 1%, 2% that they're going to be missing because of the break between Brady and Belichick. And I think that intangible difference is really important to the Patriots because they're never the most talented team. Well, let me use your words against you. And you talk about these intangibles, but let's talk about something that's tangible and not put extra on the extra 2% you say that materializes every game in the Patriots' favor. Those tangibles are, this is a team that is one and one. This is a team that last year was one and one. And last year we heard it after the Kansas City game, especially 0 oh and 1. Oh my God, the sky is falling. And then we went through a season, at least half the season. The defense, get out of here. Matt Patricia has to go. And then we went through the latter part of the season. Oh my God, do you understand the implosion that is occurring on the Patriots roster? And we have, as a mass media, tried to predict and forecast the demise of this Patriots organization, not just as recent as last year, but for every time, it seems like, since they've been on this dynastic run. And you know what they end up doing every single time, whether they cut a Richard Seymour prematurely or they go out there and say Brady and, and Belichick don't have a great relationship. They keep on winning, man. Just win, baby. So I don't understand why now the sky is falling. Because, and that's why I crafted this argument the way that I did. Okay. This isn't me talking. This isn't the sportscaster. This is a biblical lesson mm. that every man must bow to, in my view, in terms of when your pride and ego get so far out there that everybody can see that you think you did it all. I created this system. Mm. And this system is more important than all these men who... God and I help create and mold, and you lose a Tom Brady, and I think it's crystal clear. Him and Tom Brady just aren't connected. It, it, we don't have to speculate that anymore. We've seen it in Time versus Tom. We see it now in the reporting of Ian O'Connor's book. It's out of the closet now that Bill Belichick's ego, the Malcolm Butler to me was the big smoking gun, uh, that his ego is out of control. And so for me... The Bible has spoken on this. When your ego is this out of control, destruction is on its way. And I see a Patriots team and a Bill Belichick that, again, when you quit believing in men and start just believing in you and your system, it's, it's undefeated. Okay, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that record. Let's talk about... You're speaking in general terms, and I respect it. You're saying the machine, the system, men... 
let's get specific. Let's talk about one man. You said Malcolm Butler. Now, everyone at the time said, how in a two-week span between the Super Bowl and AFC Championship game did you finally figure out that Malcolm Butler doesn't deserve any playing time despite 97% yeah. playing time regular yeah. season, 100% in the playoffs? How did you figure out Malcolm Butler's not the guy for you? And even at halftime when you realized we need some help in the pass defense, why not Malcolm Butler? I hate to say it, Belichick looks prophetic. Belichick looks right. Have you looked at Malcolm Butler's numbers this year? Malcolm Butler has given up the most touchdowns as a cornerback when targeted and the most receiving yards. Now, you couple that with the reports, or at least the intel, that Malcolm Butler in that Super Bowl run had a little more fun than the Patriot way should allow for. Then you see this performance. Maybe Belichick, once again, is ahead of time. He might be on Malcolm Butler. Okay. But in that game, when Nick Foles is lighting you up that way, you got to give the guy a snap or two. You I have respect to. respect that. You have to I show. respect that. The man won you a Super Bowl with an interception. Yeah. Played good, and I think, in the second Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And so he was owed that opportunity. There's got to be some loyalty. And when you sit there in that Patriots locker room and your Tom Brady is like, Damn, man, who are you loyal to? Yeah. Uh, there, there is no human connection here at all. We've done all this. There has to be some sort of human connection or humans will disconnect from your system. Wrong in this case. Now, I'm not going against the Bible. Lord, yeah, don't set gotcha. me down. But uh, <laughs> I am going against your use of the yeah, Bible gotcha. in this scenario yeah, yeah. because... Tom Brady is motivated as well. He's not just like those other 51 guys saying, I'm going to do my job. He's Tom Brady. He's at five rings. And Tom Brady knows this in his marketing world. TB12, Alex Guerrero, franchising out, writing a book, Facebook. All this is showing a different side of branding and marketing. What does six rings look like? Only Michael Jordan. When you say five rings, you say Kobe, Derek Jeter. That's great. Well, they wear Jordan's clothes. I want to be the man, the GOAT, and that's beyond doubt. And I think because he's motivated to get that sixth ring, he knows where he has to be, and he knows where he has to fall in line to get that sixth ring. I think ring. you make an excellent point. The only thing I think you're forgetting is Tom saying he wants to play till 45. And so trust me, he feels like he'll have another opportunity to get that six ring. Elsewhere or with Belichick? No, but I think this is it for Belichick. Stop I that. Think, yeah, I think this is his last year. What? Why do you think Josh McDaniel stayed and didn't take that head coaching job? Because they gave more money? <laughs> I think in Brady's mind, we're doing one more year with Belichick, and then we're moving on. Wow. This is it. I've never seen a player ever get delusional to the place where they think they're going to outlast a coach, a successful coach, a Even championship Even Bob Kraft, coach. man. They are. You're right there. Like, it, it was three against one. It, at one time, it was Jimmy G, Tom Brady, and Kraft using the same agent against Bill Belichick. Yeah, you're right there, but coaches outlast players all the time, and the league outlasts us all. So I don't see how it's going to work this time. Ride going. Mm -hmm.